purpose of this video is to provide you with an overview of how to use the Tech Cash Register and Point of Sale Computerized Cash Register. Watching of this video before your on-the-job training will acquaint you with the basic functions of these registers and help you learn more quickly. The video contains two parts. Part 1 presents the Tech Cash Register. Part 2 covers the computerized POS Register. If you are only training on the Tech Register, stop the tape at the end of the first part. If you're training on the POS register, watch both parts. One point that we want to make clear at the beginning of training is that if you are ever in doubt about anything related to a sale or the use of the cash register, ask your manager for help. This is the Tech 141 electronic cash register. The training in part one of the video will be illustrated on the 141. However, you may actually work on an earlier model, the Tech 140. The two cash registers are very similar. What you learn about the 141 can be easily applied to the 140. At the top of the tech registers is the display. It allows you to see your entries and shows you the sales total and other information. Below the display are key slots. The two slots on the left are for cashiers. The key slots on the right are for the manager functions. On the left side of the cash register is the printer. The printer contains two rolls of paper, one for printing customer receipts the other for recording your transactions. And these are the keypads. The two larger groups of keys are the numeric keypad and the function keypad. The numeric keypad is most often used for entering prices. The function keys are for identifying departments and certain types of transactions. Three important transaction keys are tax and total, transaction total, and the charge key. Other keypads serve specific applications. For example, the two keys directly above the numeric keypad advance the paper rolls in the printer. The X key allows you to enter more than one item of the same price. For example, if a customer buys three books at $4.50 each, you press 3, then X, then 450. By the way, you don't have to enter a decimal point. The register assumes that the last two numerals are cents. This key, below the X, is for no sale and opens the cash drawer without a transaction. In addition to the cash register, you also need to be familiar with the credit card reader. The device, sometimes known by its trade name, Zahn, reads information from the magnetic strip on the back of a credit card. We'll go into more detail on the Zahn in the next segment. Now let's look at how to use the cash register. We'll begin with a simple cash transaction for one book. When you receive the book from the customer, locate the retail price. Then check the price sheet to locate the discount price for that book. Notice that there's one column for hardback books and another column for paperbacks and magazines. When you first start, you'll use the discount price sheet often, but after a while you'll memorize the most common prices. After locating the discount price, use the numeric keypad to enter that amount. Next, press the function key that identifies the department for the book. In this case, it is paperback. After asking the customer if he's found everything he needed, complete the sale by pressing the tax and total key. The register totals the sale and automatically adds the tax. Tell the customer the total. Then enter the amount of cash you receive and press the transaction total key. The display shows you the amount of the customer's change. If a customer gives you a traveler's check, follow the same procedures as cash. Now let's look at a check transaction. Ring up the sale as before and press tax and total. But instead of pressing the transaction total key as you did for cash, press the charge key instead. To complete the transaction, you must validate the check. Place the check in the printer like this, horizontally, with the printing facing you and all the way to the bottom of the validation slot. When the check is in place, a tiny green arrow appears on the display. Press the validation key just above the numeric keypad. A line of information is printed on the check and the transaction is complete. A charge is similar to a check transaction. After pressing tax and total, pass the customer's credit card through the credit card reader and enter the amount of the sale into the Zahn. Then imprint the credit card information on a charge slip and fill in all pertinent data. There are a couple more things you need to know about the Zahn. At Crown Books, we only accept Visa and MasterCard so make sure you don't pass another type of credit card through the Zahn. If you do, the transaction will be rejected. 
In the past, some customers have gotten upset because they thought the rejection meant there was a problem with their credit card. Use caution. Only accept Visa and MasterCard. Also, if the Zahn can't read the magnetic strip, you must type in the credit card number as well as the amount. Finally, when filling in the credit card slip, be sure to check the Zahn for the approval code or for other instructions. Get the customer's signature. Then press the charge key. Place the charge slip in the slot. When you see the green arrow, press the validation key. The transaction is complete. All checks, charge slips, traveler's checks, and large bills go into the drop box with excess 20s, 10s, and 5s. Here are a few more things you need to know. Remainders are especially priced items. They can be identified by a red tag which contains the publisher's code and price. When ringing up remainders, you enter the sticker price and not a discount of the sticker price. Best sellers also have red tags, but the best seller tag contains both the retail price and the discount price. In this case, you'll enter the discount price. If you make a mistake when entering a price, you can cancel the amount you entered as long as you have not pressed the key for the department. To erase the price, press the cancel key at the top of the numeric keypad. However, if the department key has been pressed, you must treat the transaction as an overring. Remember, see your manager for assistance with overrings. At the end of your shift, the manager will insert a key into the key slot on the far right and set the key to X. You then press the transaction total key and the register tabulates the end of shift information and prints it on your tape. This is known as the X reading. Remove the take-up spool from the printer and tear off the record of your transactions. Remove the tape from the spool by pulling it over the end. Write your initials and the date on the tape. Finally, replace the spool and reattach the tape. At the end of the week, the manager will set the key to Z, and the week's transactions will be recorded on the tape. This is known as the Z reading. Other cash register functions, including overrings, exchanges, and tax exemptions, will be dealt with in your on-the-job training. Using the tech cash register is relatively simple. Just remember to enter the discount price and the department for each item. When you press tax and total, the register automatically totals the transaction and adds the tax. For cash and traveler's checks, enter the amount of money you receive and press transaction total. For checks and charges, press the charge key instead of transaction total. And don't forget to validate all checks and charge slips. If you're only training for the tech register, you can stop and rewind the videotape now. But if you're training for the POS register, let the tape continue. The computerized POS register serves many functions. It's a cash register, but it is also a source of information on the store's inventory. In addition, it performs a number of management-related functions. As a cashier, you will use the cash register and inventory search functions. Let's begin with a look at the equipment itself. There are several components, some of which you already know about from your previous experience or from watching part one of the video. For the purposes of this video, we'll assume you're a new employee with no experience on the tech register. The screen shows you information related to the functions of the cash register, such as menus and sales transactions. The keyboard is a full computer keyboard, not like the keypads on the tech register. The board allows you to take advantage of the expanded capacities of the register. To use the register, you'll need to know about the function keys, often called the F keys the alphanumeric keys, and the numeric keypad. We'll go into these in more detail as we explain the functions. This is the wand. You'll use it to enter most transactions into the computer. The printer prints the customer's receipt, keeps a record of your transactions, and validates charge slips, checks, traveler's checks, and gift certificates. The printer is similar to the one on the tech register. Now that you've seen the equipment, let's look at how to use the register. When you start your shift, this is most likely the screen you'll see. It's called the logo screen, or IBID screen. IBID is the name of the software we use. To begin, type in the letters IBID and press Enter. The next screen asks for your password. 
Enter the clerk password. This is the main menu. It lists functions the system can perform. You want the function 8, so press the F8 key. F8 is one of the function keys across the top of the keyboard. Pressing F8 brings up the point of sales menu. Select the first function, cash register, by pressing the F1 key. Now type in your initials and press enter. Finally, enter your password and press enter. The transaction screen appears and you'll be ready to make a sale. Let's take a brief look at the information on the transaction screen. On the top left, below the date, is your clerk number. On the other side of the screen is the transaction number. The space below is laid out in columns and lines. Let's look at the columns. The first is entitled ISBN. We call it ISBN. The ISBN number is a code that identifies the book the customer is purchasing. The ISBN is found at various places on the book and can be wanded if the number below the barcode begins with the number 9. The ISBN is always 10 numeric digits. An item code starts with one or more alphabetic characters that can be followed with numeric digits. An item code does not have to fill in the entire ISBN field. When you pass the wand over the barcode, pertinent information about the item automatically appears across the line. This information includes the ISBN, retail price, number of items, discount code, a description of the item, a tax code if applicable, an exchange code if applicable, department, and the discount price. Below the lines and columns is a list of the 10 most used departments. This is a reference in case you need the department numbers. At the bottom of the screen are a list of important functions and their function key number. These will help you when performing special functions such as voids and cancellations. Now, let's go through a typical cash sale. Suppose a person brings three books to the register, all of which have ISBN numbers. First, wand in each item. When all items have been wanded, press the total key. The computer totals the sale and adds the tax. After the customer gives you the cash, you must enter a tender type to complete the sale. Since the computer automatically goes to a cash sale tender type, all you have to do is press the enter key. Now the computer asks you for the amount of cash received. Use the numeric keypad to enter the amount, then press enter. The amount of change appears on the screen. Complete the sale, then press enter to clear the screen for the next sale. If a customer decides to buy another item after you total the sale, but before you enter the cash, press the escape key. This returns you to the line following the last entry. Now wand in the additional item. Suppose the customer buys a book without an ISBN. The first step is to press the tab key to move to the price field, then enter the retail price. The second step is to enter the department number. Begin by pressing the department key, then entering the department number. For example, if the item is a hardback, you'll press the department key, then enter 06. When the number is entered, press the enter key. Now let's look at a transaction involving payment by check. Wand in the items and total the sale. When the computer asks for a tender type, select type 2 for checks. The computer automatically enters the amount of the sale as the total received and prompts for validation. Insert the check into the validation slot on the printer. A red light on the printer will go out when the check is in place for validation. Press enter. The check is validated. The screen clears, and you're ready for the next transaction. Now, let's look at a charge transaction. After totaling the sale, select tender type 4, charge. Pass the charge card's magnetic strip through the zon and enter the amount of the purchase. Imprint the card's information on a charge slip and fill it in. Be sure to include the approval number from the zon. After getting the customer's signature, Place the charge slip into the slot. When the red light goes out, press enter. The transaction is complete and the computer is ready for the next transaction. Let's look at one more transaction. Traveler's check. When you've totaled, select tender type 6 for traveler's check. The computer will ask you to enter the amount of the traveler's check. Use the numeric keypad to enter the amount 
and press enter. The amount of change appears and the computer prompts for a validation. Place the traveler's check into the slot. When the red light goes out, press enter. The transaction is complete, but you must press enter again to prepare for the next sale. As a cashier, you'll also sell and redeem gift certificates. To sell a gift certificate, tab from the ISBN field to the price field. Use the numeric keypad to enter the amount of the certificate. Press the department key, type 51, then press enter. And here's how you redeem gift certificates. After all items have been wanded, select tender type 7. Next, enter the number that is printed on the bottom of the gift certificate. Type in the amount of the gift certificate and press enter. The register will tell you the amount of money the customer owes, if any, and will ask you to validate the gift certificate. Remember, checks, charge slips, traveler's checks, and gift certificates go in the drop box. Our examples have illustrated the sale of books and other inventory items. Now, let's look at non-inventory items such as magazines and remainders. For magazines, type the letter M and the retail price into the ISBN field. When you type the price, you don't have to enter a decimal point. Next, press the department key. The rest of the line is then filled in automatically. To sell a remainder, type the letter X and the price into the ISBN field. Then press the department key. The computer completes the line. To sell a magazine and disc combo, type X25 in the ISBN field. Tab to the price field and enter the retail price then press the department key. The line is automatically filled in. For other non-inventory items, use the method explained earlier for entering items that have no ISBN. Let's review that method. Tab to the price field and enter the retail price. Then press the department key and enter the department number. The computer completes the line. Now let's look at special functions you need to know about, cancellations and exchanges. To cancel an item before you've totaled, simply press the F4 key. The computer asks for a line number. Enter the number of the line that is to be canceled. Press Enter. If you need to cancel more than one line, but not all lines, repeat the process. If you want to cancel the entire transaction, type the letter A for all instead of the line number. When an item is brought back for exchange, press the F6 key, then wand the item. An R will appear in the return column, and a negative amount will appear in the discount price column. When all other transactions have been added, the computer will total the sale. If the amount due is zero or greater, select the tender type and complete the sale as normal. If the customer chooses to exchange for an item of lesser amount, suggest the purchase of another item. Tax exemptions, overcharges, uneven exchanges, and other cash register functions will be covered in your on-the-job training. But before we conclude, let's look at the inventory search function. If you're in the cash register mode, press Escape to get to the point of sales menu. Then select Inventory Search by pressing the F2 key. The next screen looks like this. If you have the ISBN number, type in the number and press the F7 key. The computer provides you with information on the book such as author, title, vendor, price, location, number in stock, number on order, and more. If the customer has a title, press the tab or enter key to move to the title field and type in the title. Press F7. The computer will provide you with a list of 15 titles beginning with the first 10 characters you typed in. If the customer seems unsure of the title, you may want to enter only the first four or five characters and let the computer do the searching for you. Also, if you don't find the title right away, don't give up. Try other approaches. As you get acquainted with the system, you'll become very effective at locating information using the title search. And if you can't find it with the computer, try using the microfiche. If the book you're looking for is not in the first 15 titles, Press F5 to look at the next 15 titles and continue your search. If you wish to return to the previous list, press F6. When you find the title, use the arrow key to move the cursor to that title, then press F11. The computer will then provide you with detailed information on that title. Pressing F10 will give you even more information on that title. 
If the customer wants to know about books by a certain author, tab to the author field, enter the author's last name, and press F7. The computer lists books by that author. You may select a title and get more information on that title by following the procedures just presented. When you're finished and want to return to the point of sales menu, press Escape. Then press the F1 key to enter the cash register function. This concludes the overview on the point of sales cash register. As a cashier, you'll use the register to make sales transactions and to look up information on books in the store's inventory. You need to know how to wand and manually enter information on both inventory and non-inventory items. Your work includes sales by cash, check, charge, gift certificate, and traveler's checks. You'll also deal with cancellations, exchanges, and other functions. Learning how to use the computerized point-of-sales cash register will make your job both easier and more enjoyable. And knowing how to find information on inventory items will help you provide the level of service our customers expect.